Welcome to this tool demo. There is also a longer version showing also the backgrounds of this prompt plugin to visualize token flows. So here you can see prom in action. I'm basically selecting a, a event log. I'm also selecting a process model. After I've selected uh, both, I can take them together and I can apply uh, one of the plugins that has been developed, the Interactive Performance Spectrum plugin. Then we need to create alignments because we only have start activities. Uh, I switch that like that. And then we can see uh, the process model in our new plugin. And we can select the individual uh, places to show the performance spectrum. We can uh, zoom in and zoom out in different ways. We can also uh, adjust the height. And uh, when we zoom in, we can basically, uh, let's say, walk through uh, the entire uh, lifetime of the process. Uh, so what we can do is that we can, uh, if we select a place, we can uh, choose individual or aggregated, meaning uh, that we look at the place as a whole, or we look at all the individual connections between the different activities. Uh, to color the lines, we need to add a classifier. Uh, and there are different ways of classifying it based on uh, how rare a behavior is, uh, how long it takes, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So here I set a threshold of uh, uh, three weeks. I press OK and you can see that the lines are colored uh, accordingly. If I now change it to five weeks, uh, then you can see uh, that the picture uh, changes and there are few uh, case, fewer cases that take longer. Here I split it into four classes where red is the fastest and purple uh, takes the longest uh, time. Uh, what we can do is we can uh, adapt the visualization all kinds of ways. So now I'm showing the beginning and ends of months. Now I'm showing the weeks. I can switch to a day view. So now you can uh, see, let's say, the, the 30 or 31 uh, days within uh, an individual uh, month. We can also look at the hour level. So now you can see that uh, the lines are really uh, fine-grained. So we can uh, show and adjust time in all kinds of uh, uh, ways. We can also show these aggregate performance uh, spectra. We basically, uh, for every performance spectra, we can choose the line view and the uh, aggregated uh, view. Now the aggregation is one month. I can change it uh, to weeks. And again, we can use all the visual, uh, let's say, uh, things that I showed you uh, before. Now I'm showing the, the behavior at the level of the day. And we still have the same coloring uh, based on the classifiers. Uh, so we can do this for any uh, place. What we can also do is we can add these uh, artificial places, these virtual places. Think of them as, as milestones. But before doing that, I show you, the uh, let's say, that we can see the difference between first in, first out, and last in, first out. Yeah, so here, these crossing lines at the bottom performance spectrum is showing that in one place there is overtaking, in the other place there is no overtaking. And these are the things that one would never see by looking at uh, just aggregate statistics because they would be very similar for these two, two places. Uh, so next to uh, looking at individual places, as I mentioned, we can, uh, we can uh, make these virtual places. So we first select the source, then we select a sync or a target. And then we add this uh, virtual place, which is represented by a diamond. It is not influencing the behavior. We can uh, uh, select uh, such a virtual place and we get again the same, let's say, interface that we had before. But now rather than looking at a real place that is constraining behavior, we are looking at a measurement place. So now we see the time that takes to flow from the activity at the top to the activity in the bottom. We can add multiple of such virtual places. So now we see that there are two uh, diamonds. I can also add that to the diagram. And now you can see, let's say, the difference between the regular behavior and the cancel behavior. And that this cancel behavior 
is there in the beginning but not later in the process anymore. And also for these uh, virtual places we can also show uh, let's say these aggregate uh, performance spectra. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to to throw away all the objects that I have in PROM to, sh to sh show you how easy it is if you start from scratch and you just have a log, you don't have a model. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to run uh, the visual inductive miner. I basically I took a log, I run the visual inductive miner, it has already discovered the process model. Behind this is a process tree, uh, so we can see frequencies, uh, and the normal statistics. If we want, uh, we can also see, and now I'm, I'm moving the slider up to ensure that we uh, see all the behavior. Now I can, for example, uh, select what are the, uh, the times, let's say, in between activities. And the, thing, the activities that are now most read are the activities that take uh, the longest. I could also look at deviations, etc., but that's not the point of this presentation. Uh, whenever we have a model that we are happy with, we can basically save it as a PetriNet. Now I can select the event log and the PetriNet that I just discovered, as so I didn't model anything, and I can run again the performance spectrum. Just as before, we need to first compute an alignment, that's what I'm doing here. So we go through all the standard uh, steps, because this is a small log, this is fairly uh, quick. Uh, so uh, what, what I now do is that you can see that basically everything that I showed before I can uh, do again. The key difference why I show you this is that it's also very easy to use this plugin if you don't have a process model yet, you just have raw event data. Uh, so basically all the uh, different uh, possibilities that were there before I'm now, for example, uh, again adding a virtual place, this newly discovered uh, model. I can select it and I immediately see, let's say, uh, where uh, the bottlenecks are, uh, where the drifts are, where there is batching and all these other phenomena uh, that we could normally not see if we would just look at places. I hope this was all clear and I would like to encourage you to take a look at the longer version of this video, also showing some of the backgrounds.